What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back into another banger of a video. Today's video, I'm going to be starting a series called GERD 101. And I'll be sharing just a lot of uh, small small tips that have helped me throughout my journey. But also, uh, I want to share just information for people who recently started suffering from GERD. Just kind of help them uh, prevent some of the things that I had to go through. And hopefully, your journey uh, with your health can get better faster so you won't have to go to through the struggles or difficulties that I had to go through, right? Uh, I've been a sufferer for from GERD for uh, about a decade now, and I've had even surgeries to try to cure my issues. Uh, if you want more information, of course, on my health journey, you can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, of course, and turn on notifications when uh, videos go, go live. But you can go to my channel, and you can see all my journey um, and all my experiences, even the testings that I've done, the surgeries and all that stuff. It's all on there. But I wanted to start a video to make sure that, you know, some of the people understand um, some of the foods to stay from, maybe some of the uh, some of the drinks, not what not to eat, what to eat. Uh, and again, just remember, guys, that this video is coming from my experience. So it's not a it's not medical advice. It's just sh someone sharing who has suffered for about a decade now their experience on what they would have done if, you know, or avoid if, you know, I went back in time and try to understand that much, right? Because at the beginning, it's, you know, GERD is just, it's this disease that, you know, seems incurable. But there are certain things that you can stay away from and do um, to, to, to live a better lifestyle. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. One of the first things that I wanted to share for you guys to, to stay away from is anything acidic. And it sounds kind of basic, right? Like if you're suffering from acid reflux... And um, you eat or drink that's something acidic, it's probably gonna cast you, cause you cause you more acid reflux, right? It's just uh, basic things. Of course, there's different things that can go into it. For example, there is cases, and I've seen some of this. And you guys, if you're doing your research, you might know some of this. That there's cases which is rare. I haven't met too many people like this, but where they are overproducing or they are they are under I'm sorry they are underproducing acid so whenever they eat something that's acidic for example like apple cider vinegar apparently it helps their acid reflux issues and why is that the, the science is kind of simple behind it and I'm trying to explain it to you as easy as possible well if you're underproducing right uh acid well, your the acid is not telling your sphincter, which is called your LES, right? Your low esophageal sphincter, and that's the muscle that connects. It literally connects the the esophagus to your stomach. So that muscle is not getting information from the stomach saying, "Hey, I'm producing acid." So now close. Is literally the signs behind that, right? You can get more into it, but I'm trying to do it as simple as possible for people uh, who are just getting into uh, suffering from from this disease. So if you're underproducing, then your body's not telling your sphincter, hey, close now because, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm about to produce more acid or I'm not producing enough acid. So when you drink like apple cider vinegar, that creates more acid in your stomach and it kind of tells your sphincter close and it does. So now there are some rare cases uh, when it comes to that. I don't know many people that suffer from that. Typically, it's the opposite. Typically, we are overproducing acid. So when we add more acid, so examples of foods can be anything that has lemon, lime, uh, for example, lemonade, uh, or even if you eat tomatoes, for example, that is very, very acidic and very, very bad for you. Um, also, when it comes to if you want to do like OJ in the morning, I used to love OJ in the morning, but when I started suffering from acid reflux, it was one of the worst things, especially the ones that, they, for example, you know, the ones that they sell uh, like at Chick-fil-A or something, right? They seem to be very, very acidic. But if you were to do it more naturally, I feel like it doesn't affect them as much. So if you were to do like oranges and squeeze them out naturally, which nowadays you really don't see that. But back in El Salvador, uh, I did that before when I was in, like back in the past. And it seems to be more healthier uh, choice, of course, because it's not, you know, processed. So um, a lot of acidic things will make your acid go beyond crazy and on top of that not just the acid part itself but let's say if you are someone that eats at 7 p.m or 8 p.m and then you go to sleep at 10 well your body is still trying to digest the food or anything acidic that you ate and now you're going to have issues 
with acid reflux, especially at night because of the gravity, right? A gravity for acid reflux, uh, people can be a blessing uh, or can be a curse, especially at night when you go to sleep. So if you're going to sleep and you just ate this, you know, a lot of acid or, or your food contains something that was a lot of, you know, a lot of acid, that could be an issue. And that could be something that could, you know, affect you even more into your acid process. So maybe you can start applying some things or maybe eating earlier, three to four hours. You know, sometimes I eat, I personally even eat like four or five hours before I go to sleep, if I'm being honest. Something that I, I you know, I've gotten used to. And I've done a test that's called the gastric emptiness study for uh, to see how fast my food, my stomach digests the food. And it takes me about three hours. So if I pass four hours, five hours, I know that my food has been digested. And for the most part, I won't struggle so much from acid reflux, right? Another thing that can uh, affect you is spicy foods. And I know a lot of my... Um, my Mexican friends, my Indian friends, or people who just love spicy foods. I'm sorry, but spicy foods is something that is, is, is it, it triggers a lot. And to be honest, I feel like even spicy foods trigger even more of my gastritis. I feel it actually feels more, a little bit more painful whenever I do eat something spicy, but spicy foods are something that are, I feel like are detrimental to me. It's like, I, I, it doesn't matter what time I eat. It doesn't matter when I eat it. Spicy foods will get me all the time, specifically because I continue to suffer from GERD issues even after my surgeries. So staying away from spicy foods as much as you can, it's going to be a blessing for you. Now, I'm not saying, um, you know, don't even even a little bit spicy, but depending on your issues and how bad they are, until you start finding out what works for you, just start, try to be disciplined and try to stay away from it. Because, you know, if you're at the beginning stages of GERD or acid reflux or anything like that, just remember that you got to learn your body now. You got to learn what's affecting and what's causing your body. Because, again, what's affecting me might not be affecting you and what's affecting you might not be affecting me. So learn the way your body works and what is something that's affecting it or causing certain issues. But typically, for the most part, spicy foods, especially if you've always been eating spicy foods, there is a reason why your body cannot tolerate it anymore. Just remember that. There's a reason why your body is being affected by spicy foods. So maybe it was the spicy foods that caused something. Maybe it was the acidic foods that caused something, right? And maybe some of the things that I will add in the video in a little bit are some of the things that cause. So you got to learn and see what's causing the spicy foods. But for me, personally, I can't really do too spicy. You know what I'll do sometimes, though? If I know there is a spicy food or something that has a lot of, you know, spice in it that I know will burn my throat and my esophagus. What I'll do is I'll probably eat that first and then the rest of the food afterwards, right? So I'll follow up with the rest of the food. Maybe that's not acidic. So hopefully like the, the food that's not acidic ends on top of the, the food that's spicy. And then for some time, the you won't feel as much of the uh, acid reflux. But eventually remember, the acid is still breaking everything down so at the end you will still feel some type of um uh some of the whatever that spice was left with the acid you'll still feel that in in, in your esophagus unfortunately uh it's just you know the way that it goes so of course avoiding it is the best option but if you have to sometimes if you go to a party or maybe thanksgiving or the holidays you never know food it's delicious maybe try to eat a little bit and just eat it first and then do the rest of the foods under and then follow up follow it up with water you know keep drinking water or something that can soothe your throat uh maybe like tea or something like chamomile tea that can be something that can help you who knows but again it's part of learning your body and learning um what to eat and what not to eat and maybe even when to eat it but spicy food for me i really just try to delete everything as much as i can luckily for me i've never been a spicy food person in general so that's a blessing for me but anything else, I know it would be, it would be, it's, it gets crazy for me. Let's move on to another thing uh, that can be really, really bad for you if you're suffering from GERD. And depending on your issues, it can be even worse. So uh, another thing, other things that you need to stay from is gassy drinks or drinks or foods that make you gassy or even make you bloated. Um, 
any of those things that can make you gas or bloated, it's really, really going to affect you. For example, simple things like Coke, fizzy drinks, um, even when it comes to foods, broccoli can cause gas in you. Obviously, it depends on you to see if it does, but it's something that uh, it's, it's, it's a trial, right? You can try to see certain foods and whenever you eat or drink, see what causes you the worst. So if you're suffering from GERD, maybe gassy drinks might not be something that's really making you the worst. But if it is something like you're drinking Coke in general, the sugar that the Coke has can make you gassy. I mean, can make you have even more acid reflux on top of the gas. So um, even going back to like acidic things, um, fuck, I lost it. So let's move on to another thing that can. Uh, so let's move on into other things that can make you. Wait, wait, wait. So let's move on into other things that can affect your GERD. And in this situation, for me, and it's really, really bad, is anything that causes me to have gas or make me feel bloated. For example, uh, drinks are like something like Cokes, right? Any sodas, anything that's fizzy, that's going to cause. Uh, you know, to have more bubbles, um, it's tough. Uh, for example, even when it comes to food, broccoli can cause some of that, right? I've noted that a lot of vegetables, especially if they're not cooked well, they can cause me a lot of gas. And I know I'm not the only one that has suffered from that. I've seen other people and I've heard from other people that suffer from it. So even that can cause me a lot of gas. Uh, if drinking from a straw can cause you to have gas because you, you, when you're drinking through a straw, there's a lot of air bubbles that can cut up. And when you're drinking it, those air bubbles obviously go to your stomach and can make you feel bloated or make you feel gassy, surprisingly enough. So again, maybe some drinks like Cokes or anything like that maybe are not you know the, what's causing your GERD by any chance or making it worse. But I will say even the sugar that's in the Coke can cause you to have more acid reflux because sugar does cause more acid reflux. But it could or could not be the case for you, but it's something that I feel like you should be aware of because for me in my case, especially now after having surgeries, gas and bloatiness are a real issue. I did not understand how bloatiness um, can be, I mean, so hard on me. Like it, you can actually feel pain in your intestines and, and your stomach from just feeling bloatiness, right? From so much gas being around. Uh, let me uh, something extreme. And this is because I've had surgeries, right? So if you're new to this, you probably haven't. But let me give you a, a crazy example. After having surgeries, I started having more, you know, issues with gas and food every time I eat. It doesn't matter what I eat, when I eat, it does not matter. But even on the x-rays, when I went to get uh, checked with my links, you can see the amount of gas that's on my intestines and like uh, on my stomach. I mean, half of it just looks like it's filled with gas. Now, you might think, well, it's kind of natural. It's your intestines, but it's not supposed to be like that. It was, it's way too much gas all over my stomach. So I constantly feel some type of bloatiness or constantly feel some uh, type of gas and I have to pass gas. And it's the unfortunate, or unfortunate situation. Again, some of the reasons as to why I even created my channel. So make sure and test out to see if gas is something or some uh, gassy foods uh, or, uh, you know, anything that's like, uh, very that causes anything bubblish in your stomach. May test those out to see if that's causing, but you know, feeling that feeling is just you know, even worse, especially again. If you go back to like the sodas example, I mean, if you're drinking all that sugar in general, it's not even good for you in the first place. But who knows? It, it probably might be one of the reasons why uh, you now are suffering from GERD. Who knows, right? Something that you need to just be on the lookout for. And I feel like it was something important to share. Another one staying away from greasy foods. And I know, I know we all, we all love ourselves some, you know, some burgers, uh, pizzas, I mean, you name it, just greasy foods. And just sometimes even fa fast food hits different and I get it. Look, I get it. I, and you're asking Carlos, so damn, so what can I eat? To be honest, when it comes to GERD, it's a lot of things you can't eat, but again, you have to figure out what's causing and what is affecting you more in your issues, Right. Like fast foods for me, like if I were to go to Chick-fil-A or if I were to go to Zaxby's, I kind of know, have an idea on what to eat and what not to eat, right? So if I get, for example, I go to Chick-fil-A, right? God's chicken, by the way, I truly believe that. Regardless, 
if you were to eat Chick-fil-A like a sandwich, what I do is take away a ba- the bacon out if it has bacon. Um, typically, chicken sandwiches don't, don't have that. But anything, like if, it, if it's a burger or sandwich, take the bacon out. Uh, I take the tomato out and I just eat, you know, the chicken, the lettuce and the bun, which is not the craziest thing, you know, out there, of course. And it, I still feel decent afterwards. So I kind of know myself and I know what I can handle and cannot handle. So if you were to eat something that's greasy or fast food, I mean, be careful with it. Cause even, uh, fry foods, for example, that's an important one. Fry foods. Oh my goodness. Fry foods not only give me acid because of the breading, but also because I get, uh, bloating. Fry foods make me bloat so fast to the point where I start having pain in my lower right abdomen, in my lower right quadrant, like that section. And it makes me feel like I have uh, appendicitis, like pain. And I'm like, bro, so when it comes to having um, these greasy foods or or, or even uh, when it comes to having these fried foods, I really try to stay away from as much as possible. You know what I do do, though? If I were to eat something like uh, that's greasy or, you know, um, or something heavy like that, Try to cook it at your house with a healthier oil, right? With olive oil, coconut oil. Uh, there's so many options. Avocado oil. That can even help you a little bit more when it comes to your issues. And then you can figure out maybe it's the grease they're using at the fast food restaurants that's causing, you know, the issues within you, right? Maybe it's not just the food itself. Maybe it's the grease. Maybe it's the type of breading, right? You can try at home and see if you can do a different type of breading if that affects you or not. That is a very important part because you you start to narrow down what is and what isn't really causing it. And eventually your lifestyle will get even better uh, because now your body knows what it can and cannot take. Right. And eventually, if you stay away from certain foods, I heard some people that say stayed away from certain foods in the future when they consume them again. It doesn't have that major effect on them no more because they kind of healed their gut from it. Right. So that's something important that I feel like is um something that you can be on the lookout for uh, and it can have like different effects in your body. So one of the last things in that, I think I forgot to add it to the spicy itself, but this can be something that can be added as well. Just spices in general, right? Like the spices. And, and this is why I said, when I mentioned like, and you know, my Indian friends, uh, they, they will suffer from because suffering from so much from this, because even from my YouTube channel, like a lot of people from India and like that side of the world, always reach out to me and like how much they struggle with like gut issues because I understand that their food has a lot of uh, spices and it's delicious. Like I love, it's so good, but I understand even condiments can affect your acid, right? Because it can be so heavy. Like for example, one time I remember getting uh, a chicken and it had a lot of pepper, but when I ate it, it caused me to have a lot of acid and i was like why you know it's healthier it's a chicken breast um you know it was delicious all this and that, but it's because of the things on top of that that they added you know like uh you know extra pepper and you know all these all the different little spices that can cause you to have even you know, reflux so i know for some people it's even harder to stay away from spices because i don't blame you man i don't blame you if food is good and spices give it that taste that it needs right so it won't be bland so I wanted to add that a little bit, too, because that can be important, something that you can look into and say, hey, maybe a certain type of spice that I'm adding to my food uh, or that I'm consuming is causing my issues to get worse. Right. Because you're trying to get to the bottom line of learning your body and trying to see what does and what doesn't cause you uh, certain issues. Right. And maybe sometimes at what time. So is it is it worse when you go to sleep at night or can you consume it like in the afternoon? And then when you eat dinner again, you eat something healthier. It doesn't seem to affect you as much. Certain things like that, like that, you can apply to and see what causes it or not. Of course, keep getting checked with your doctor, right? Keep going to a gastro doctor or natural doctor, whichever you prefer. I go to both and I have some of those videos also on my channel. And you can see, you know, what's good for you and what's, what, what's not good for you. Of course, keep doing your research. I feel like that's very important as well. Keep doing your research as much as you can online because half the battle is also you uh, understanding not only your body, uh, but also understanding how your your anatomy works, uh, what's affecting it. So then you can bring feedback to your doctor, right? Because that's that's your homework on your end is to bring, fact, bring, bring uh, the facts to your doctor. And they're like, hey, this is happening at this time or whenever I eat or drink this, this is happening, right? 
Now, for preference, if you can afford it, I would definitely say try to go to, excuse me, by the way, try to go to a natural medicine doctor, holistic doctor, just because they try to work from like the, to try to see what the root cause of your issues are. And I actually have a video on how to find here in the States, how to find, uh, you know, natural medicine doctors. But if, if not, go to Google, right? It, natural or holistic doctor near me. And it will give you to different, you know, uh, give you different sources and, and maybe some areas where to go. That would be a good option just because they try to find the root cause of your problems and they try to solve it so they can try to like narrow it down. You know, hopefully they can solve that or, or cure that. And that would be something that, you know, you probably won't have to deal with in the future or at least it'll be better. Typically, when you go to go to all Western medicine, they'll probably put you on PPIs. But even that's not a, the craziest, you know, the worst option if you're learning how to uh, combat this. Right. But if if you get on PPIs and you're like, oh, I'm good now, I can keep doing what I what I what I've been doing, then it's not really helping you. You need to take the PPIs while you're trying to learn your body and trying to see what helps you trying to cure yourself, trying to see the other options that you have. So you won't be on PPIs for the rest of your life. Because let me let me tell you guys something important that maybe I even should have started with this, right? There is a reason why your body is responding to the way it is. And that's facts, right? You have been doing something wrong that your body now is either rejecting or is being affected by it because you've been doing or living a lifestyle that's not healthy, living a lifestyle maybe that you're eating a certain too much of th something that now you're suffering from GERD. Something's happening. That's that's not rocket science. That's basic. So now you need to find out what is causing that. Is it your lifestyle? Is it the food intake? What time you eat? How much you eat? Do you chew your food well? Things of that nature. Like, that matters. That matters and it plays into everything you do. So just remember that something caused it and now you're trying to find out what is it that's causing it, right? It doesn't just happen randomly. I don't think I've ever heard or met somebody that said, oh, I just started, you know, for no reason. But it's there's a reason behind it, right? Your body's a machine, right? If you take care of it well, typically it'll run well. But if there's some things that is, you know, you're being affected even when you're older, be careful, be careful. And this is not to scare you. This is just something that some people fail to grasp. And it took me some time to grasp. Like, hey, I was doing something wrong, but I never did anything about it. Because we're worried about other things in life, your job, your life, stress, family, whatever, until this hits you and you're like, okay, I got to pay attention to my body. So that's what I want to leave you guys off with. Uh, I do want to add, guys, if you're ever interested, I also have a podcast in this channel. It's just called the Carlos Rona Podcast. I bring a lot of my friends in and we talk about a lot of different things in life, our journeys, you know. And one of the best things about the podcast is people sharing open, uh, my friends and family, about their experiences with anything in life, you know, anything in struggles. And I think that's, I keep it as natural as possible when it comes to my podcast. You know, it's nothing crazy professional. I'm not really interviewing people. It's just things that can help other people just, you know, keep thriving. And I love that. So if you're interesting, uh, of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll live, I'll put the links, everything um, uh, below on the, on the description of the video. And if you have any questions on maybe what else the GERD 101 series should be, or uh, what should I add to it? I will do that. So you guys can get more info on that and learn from my experience. But I will keep bringing GERD 101s, uh, prostatitis 101s, maybe even heart rate 101. You never know all these one on ones. I just want people to get the basics and learn from it uh, because I understand. Trust me, you're not alone. If you're suffering or just started suffering from these issues, I just want you to know you're not alone. There's a community here on my channel and my videos. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, you guys can get some answers soon. So as always, stay, stay safe. Uh, be safe in the holidays. Uh, take care of yourself or your family and uh, try to have as much as of a positive mindset that you can so we can start the new year with a banger. So as always, familia. Much love and take care. See you guys in the next one.